Hi Nova Kane, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity for this interview. We really appreciate it. So let's let's get right into it. Who are we in the band and what do we do? So I'm Edwin Hall. I am one of the vocalists, one of the co-vocalists, co-lead vocalists. Uh, I just do clean singing. There is Amy Allen. She also does clean vocals, one of the other vocalists, of course. Then there is Chris Eleanor. He is behind guitars and programming. And then there is Simon Bullock, drums and percussion. How did the band's name come to be, and um, what's the meaning? What's the meaning behind it? So, we didn't have a name for a long time. I, I believe we were writing our debut single, and we named that before we named ourselves. <laughs> I think we got to a point where we were like, guys, we really need to, really need to come up with something now. Uh, and we just threw names all the time in a chat and just came up with anything. And one day, Chris, the guitarist, he put one in the chat, said, just said see Carbach, just said it. And I went, that's it. Because I'm a firm believer, if you see something and it has a ring to it, it doesn't matter about the meaning behind the name first. Because if you say a band name long enough, you forget the meaning. A good example of this is the Red Hot Chili Peppers. You don't really think of the vegetable, you think of the band, you think of the members. So C. Carver, I thought, in the future would just has that snap to it. C. Carver it just sounds good. I just that's just my my explanation anyway. Um, but it does have a meaning, and of course, because we are all based around the seaside, uh, it's sort of that maybe being adrift at sea when you're sort of looking for land. Uh, it's that sign of hope, that sign of home and comfort. You're seeking a harbour. As soon as you find one, you're sort of ah. Oh, no, thank, thank goodness. So that's 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 that one. Yeah. When and how were we formed? Um, late summer of 2019, we formed. So I used to frequent one of the rock bars in town quite a lot. Uh, it was called the Warmer Castle. I uh, went there quite often, and CJ would be in there sometimes. We've all been in bands. Uh, all of us, all four of us, have been in bands growing up, and um, several. And I knew. Chris was good at what he did, so I would sometimes joke with him about forming a band, like, hey, we should do one one day, and he just uh, brushed it off, whatever. And we sort of came up with a fantasy football team, if you like, of people that we would like to pick, cherry pick from the town and put in the band. And there was Simon on drums, and uh, the other one was Loz, which is the screamer, which you hear on some of the older tracks, uh, just picked our own favourite best of the bunch and joked about it and uh, we pitched the idea and Chris kept saying no Chris was the one that didn't want to do it until he went to watch Being as an Ocean live um, at a festival I forget what the festival was called I'm afraid and honestly he uh, he was uh, completely blown away and he made the whatsapp group and that was it he was like are we doing this or what guys describing our genre of music um so we were originally post hardcore slash melodic hardcore that was when loz was in the band um which i will get into a little bit more a little bit further on into the interview but now amy's here i'd say we're alternative rock fall under that quite comfortably but we still do pride ourselves on you know we try so hard to create melody through instruments and vocals we're a big fan of atmospheric touching deeply sad music so we really want it to speak to someone something they can feel comfortable around like that just that comfort of something that just really gets them in their soul um and we pride ourselves on that we really do so yeah the odd heavy bit as well but we really do try to make it atmospheric big sounding poppy choruses catchy you name it it's, it's probably quite a lot going on with our music if i'm honest <laughs> what are your goals as a band so everyone's goal is to is to make it and i don't mean like fame i don't think that's a healthy thing to to want we just really want to be self-sufficient that's our first step because it's very important in life to make smaller goals the end goal is great but the smaller goals keep you going you know that little dopamine hit of climbing slowly so to be self-sufficient would be great you know to go on tour without having to pay for a tour 
be perfect because most bands make a loss, unfortunately. But you do it for the love and the passion, and that doesn't matter. So it doesn't, we don't really need to uh, bring that. It's not well. It's not something we talk about. We just we got another tour. Great. <laughs> so to be self-sufficient would be great. But of course, to to meet other bands that are a little bit further on than us and stuff would be incredible as well. You know, just making contacts, making friends, meeting people, meeting fans. It's just the way to be. It's like traveling, but through a passion, you know, so it's great. Which band inspired C. Carver? So, of course, Being As An Ocean. That's the main one that created the beginnings of the band. That's what made CJ create the, well, Chris made create the group with all of us in it. So that's a big one, of course. But we all do have our individual inspirations for Sea Carver. Of course, there are things we grew up with uh, holding as an influence in our own lives separately. But for Sea Carver specifically, uh, there's different ones. I mean, CJ, I know for a fact, really likes Alaska as well. So that's two for him, for sure. Uh, he's a big fan of John Mayer. So you may notice there's a few a fair few licks and solos in our songs, which could be likened to him, I would say. Myself, for Harbour, um, Johnny Craig. I know some people have a lot of negativity attached to his name. I don't know much about him as a person, but I just looked up to the gruff in his voice, the power and the range. So that's a big one for me. Um, there's there's definitely a Paramore influence in there somewhere for me. And a Yumi at six. Um, for, for Amy, it would be Holding Absence, Spirit Box, um, for sure. Mallory Knox, I would say. She mentions those quite a lot. And for Simon, our drummer, uh, Jojo Mayer. Benny Greb. And a bit of Guns N' Roses, I would say. For, for sure. That's, that's our influences towards T. Carver, yeah. So, what is Fortune versus Favour about? Fortune versus Favour is basically we're trying to write a song from the perspective of first world problems in a sense. You know, issues that we experience where realistically we're quite fortunate. We actually do have everything we want and need, but we're chasing the next thrill with money, the next fix with an item, object, retail therapy. You're getting upset when phones don't work, things like that, where in actual fact there are people who are born against their will. In third world countries, you know, having to put up with what they're doing in their living circumstance, and that's they're far worse off than we are. And we take that for granted. You know, fortune versus favour, it's, it's in our favour that we are born here, and we're moaning about our fortune you know with the money not using it as we should be and moaning about it all the time so it's sort of a take on that fortune your money versus the favor of where you've been born really it's just there's more pressing issues out there than the issues that we tend to mock up from day to day the songwriting behind the track so this is where i want to talk a little bit about Loz. So he originally was uh, writing these songs with us and unfortunately due to other commitments he had to leave, uh, which is fine, you know, we're all still really good friends. So but the songwriting behind this one is mainly the brains uh, Chris. <laughs> so Chris is a very, very talented writer. He tends to do quite a bit of it himself. He will spend some time in his home studio coming up with licks and things like that and writing the basis of a song. He'll send to Simon. Simon will work out drums. He'll give the idea 
to Amy and I. He might have put a tune in there sometimes, which we will adapt, and then we'll start writing lyrics together. So that's mainly the songwriting process, and has been for these four tracks in particular, getting together in a room, um, minus Simon, because he's got his drum stuff that he's doing himself. So Amy, myself and Chris will sit down in a room, play the songs, play the piano parts, uh, work out notes, change notes, and just flip back and forth really. And we did several sessions of that till the song was complete. Yeah. Compared to the previous songs, is there anything different? Yeah. I guess there is. Because we're trying to own the fact that Amy has such a powerful high register we we try to push that in there as much as we can she has such nice grit to her voice so towards the end of the song we we've, we've really gone with a build up and a, and a power and a push up whereas skin versus chrome just sort of drops dead never going to start just done this one is more of a build up and stuff like that this song is a little bit uh, cheesier you could say for want for a better word We've definitely gone with the the long, drawn-out chorus again. Easy to sing along to, a bit like Ghost and Shadow. Uh, you know, compared to the fast choruses of Skin vs. Chrome. So there's a bit of a change in there. Um, yeah, that's about it, I'd say. How has the world of music acted so far? So people, fans, friends and family, they always act rather positively and they do give us feedback, uh, which is valuable. You know, we really appreciate it the world world of music like radios and television and that sort of stuff they tend to act really positively we, we hear from Karan Young Blood and BBC Introducing and BBC Kent quite often as well as RTE Radio um, Irish Radio uh, Amazing Radio things like that so we, we tend to get spun quite often and everyone's acted really positively so it's nice that every time we release a track we hear back <laughs> that's quite a good little rhyme that are we thinking about an EP or album. So, our first, our debut album, debut EP, sorry, that was Far From Home. That's already released. That was with Loz. And this is our second EP with Amy. And we have thought about an album several times now. We've mentioned it so many times. It's been dropped in conversation quite often. And I'm quite confident it's something we want to look into. So yes, I think there are plans of an album, but that's distant, distant stuff. <laughs> but yeah, it's in there, yeah. That's something I'd like to do anyway. Has anything changed with the song before release that you didn't get to hear? So yes, the situation with Loz. So we wrote all of these songs with Loz and they were recorded originally with Loz on them. So Loz was on the original tracks. Um, something came up for him. He chased a dream and he had the opportunity to do it. So he went for it. And, you know, it doesn't matter. Things happen. So we went back to the drawing board and found Amy and rewrote the tracks, basically, with her on them. So yeah, there are tracks somewhere with myself and Loz singing these EP tracks. But yeah, so that's what you didn't get to hear. How did we meet Amy and how did she become the new vocalist? So, it took us a few days, then a few weeks, and then a couple of months. And we were honestly looking really dire, dire straits, this situation. We were almost giving up. We were posted everywhere on all these Facebook groups for looking for musicians. Um, we went to the open mic nights. We tried so many times and when our luck felt like it was wavering, we, I think Chris invited me to the local open mic night where the same people go. I wasn't up for it, but I went anyway. And luckily I did because Amy wasn't there. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what happened. I was sat next to Chris and my phone went off. Now, uh, just a message, just a notification. I looked and it was Amy. So I was like, oh, look, someone from a group on Facebook has seen my post. Let's see what they have to say. She looks the part and we managed to find her old band on Spotify and thought, 
yeah, we could we could give we could give that a go. Absolutely. So, yeah, discussing the process of that though. Uh, so there were a, a few people that we got hold of, a few people in the pipe work. It was very simple. We sent everybody a little form to fill out. We tried to make it a bit fun so it doesn't feel like a job interview. Um, people filled out the form. Uh, do you know what to expect from the, from being in this band? This is what you should expect. What do you expect? Any experience? Uh, just, just generic questions, name, um, fake food, just to be silly. <laughs> um, and then after that, we got in a room, met, met people, spoke about it, see, saw if it was something they were interested in, got a feel of what we were all like together, chemistry with everybody and then after that we went into a music room that was like a week, a week later a music room and then we got everybody to sing the songs and with their permission we recorded it uh, recorded them and then we sat down as a group i say group <laughs> simon cj and i sat down and listened to them over and over and pros and cons but we weren't harsh we weren't rude we were listening for textures and and we were listening mainly for um, what we could expect so it's not just that's how they sound that's what we get we were like can we picture uh, molding this painting with this voice and uh, you know a new blank canvas and that's basically what we did and eventually we chose Amy and that was the process uh, and she's done really well she's really really delivered she has a great high range that she hid during the uh, recording uh, interviewing interviewing process <laughs> And yeah, we're really happy with our choice. So that was that. Where was the first place we performed and how did it go? So the first place we ever performed was a hometown show. It was at the Astor Theatre in Deal. It was for a cancer charity for my best friend who unfortunately has passed away. He wanted to do a little fundraiser for his charity. Um, so his band, The Submission, headlined really popular deal band back in, uh, back in the day, sorry. And we played, f I think, second? And then the first was the Circus Birds. And it went really well. The reception was great. Everybody seemed to have a great night. Beer, music, good people, good venue. That's literally it. That's all you want, really. Uh, yeah, it was a great, great show. In fact, <laughs> I remember, sorry. <laughs> we had an issue with our mixer halfway through. So our songs sort of it didn't cut out, but uh, we couldn't work out the next part of our set. <laughs> there was a moment where we were all clambered around this instrument trying to fix it. But obviously, uh, just being a charity show, everyone's having a laugh about it. So it wasn't too much of an issue. And we did fix it and did finish the show. So <laughs> that's fine. But yeah, first gig, something went wrong. It's like everyone's nightmare, I suppose. <laughs> Are we currently touring and where? Yes, we will be touring. We've done one in January. We've just finished one, so that's of no use, but uh, we're doing another one in May. So May the 10th, 11th and 12th. We're doing Cheltenham, Carlisle and Birmingham. So if you look on our Facebook page, you should be able to find it under events and we're going with Cult 45. So that's going to be great, yeah. Any specific favorite venues and why? Yes, 100% The Lighthouse. So that is another venue which is in our hometown. It's technically in Warmer, but it's just on the outskirts of Deal. It's a uh, music and arts pub. It's a local venue for local artists, musicians, of course, uh, poetry, stand-up comedy, really great beer, great people, great owners. It's just such a heart of music for the town. They do music every week from Thursday to Sunday, as far as I'm aware. We tend to sell out. All of our fans come, they, they shout the lyrics back at us, you know, and the sound is impeccable. It's run by musicians. Uh, these guys have been musicians their entire life in very successful local bands and beyond. And they're just, they know exactly what they're doing and the sound's great, the people are great. And every single time there's just incredible energy in the venue. So that's by far our favorite venue. I would say all of ours, yeah. Have we performed with other artists? We have performed with many other artists and it's all been great. It might be, it feels new to me, but everybody within the rock scene is so lovely. It's been an absolute pleasure. From the likes of Fountain Island, Animalia, Twin Skeletons, Skies, who we toured with in January. 
uh, Chugga Boom, they were great. Frankie Delta, just been so many, so many friendly people. First thing you do when you get to a show is recognize the other band, go straight up to them, give them a big handshake, and that's it. You're just best friend, friends for like ages, especially when you go on tour with people, it's incredible. So, yeah, we had such a great time with every single band we played with. I've missed so many names, but uh, yeah, everybody's been absolute, absolute hoot. <laughs> artists we would like to tour with so being realistic well it might not even be realistic but there are a few on our label which would be great and there's a few that we have in mind that we've spoken to before so of course the city is ours i would love to tour with those guys we've done an interview with them i think uh, Loz did that for us and you know, i love their tunes such great guys you know immerse that'd be great be incredible to go on tour with them in retrospect mouth culture kite thief you know so many yeah i'm sure the the other people in the band would would say I mean, others of course but those are some of the ones that we, we really want to aim to get on tour with soon because it'd be great to meet them especially other bands on the roster and just make new friends new friends for sure yeah contacts everything i'm sure others in the band would have completely different ideas of who they'd want to go on tour with. We probably share similarities, but there are definitely other bands out there that the other guys would like to go on tour with. So that's just to name a few uh, from my side. Any funny stories on the road? There is always funny stories from the tiniest conversation in the van to the silent moments to getting to hotels to going in venues getting on stage all the small moments there's always a joke there's always making fun of each other lightheartedly no one no one ever gets hurt and it's just always fun always funny so i can't really think of anything in particular but to put my own neck on the line, I remember we got, when we went out on tour with Skies most recently, we went to Birmingham first of a run of four dates. And we unloaded everything from the van with Skies and Seek Harvest uh, gear. Got it all into the venue, the first venue, started unpacking. Amy said, I'm gonna go change into my stage gear now. I was like, oh, that's a great idea. I went to the van and my suitcase wasn't there and I remember putting it into Chris's house we went to band practice came back from band practice loaded the van and went and Chris didn't bring it back out from his hallway going here's your case don't forget that and I walked past it as well so <laughs> I didn't have my whole suitcase for the whole of tour luckily I had a second bag with all my toiletries so I had deodorants, toothpaste, hairspray, and things like that. So that was absolutely fine. But I had to go into Primark and other places and buy socks and white shirts and things that are sort of yellowy white, just so I could have a stage outfit. But I remember on the first night, I, because I wore something comfortable for the van, I was just basically dressed like a bit of a hillbilly and it looks really, really out of place. So. That was a nightmare, but really funny. You know, if something is going to be an anecdote in the future, there is no reason why it can't be an anecdote shortly after, because what's happened's happened. So I was laughing about it within within the hour, I think, but I was a little bit annoyed, yeah. So that's it. Thank you, Novocaine, for giving us the chance once more. We really appreciate it. If you didn't catch it, we are Seek Harbour, and please follow us on any social media platforms. Facebook and Instagram are our main ones. TikTok as well, please. And it would mean the world to us if you give us a like on Spotify and a little follow with Mayor as well. That'd be that'd be awesome. Take care everyone. Thank you. Just for